I, I really enjoy the uh, connection that I get to make with the audience. When you can look out and people are listening for the next word, they want to know where the story goes. When you're telling a funny story, I love it when people are laughing. You know, at first you eased on the brakes and then off the brakes and then eased on the brakes, but then we came to what I like to call a hoopty do in the mountain, where the mountain goes back up a little bit. So they were very concerned that we were not going to have enough momentum or speed to get over the hoopty do. So they let off the brakes. And the connection you make with people where they come up after the, the, the concert, ask more questions about the story, or they, they tell you the connection they have to the story, and they say, I want to, you know, do you, do you have this on CD? Because I, I got I to gotta play this for my, my brother-in-law. He'll love this story because he's got a similar story. I was talking to my friend Lynn the other day. She's another storyteller, and she was telling me that her parents never smoked, her parents never drank, her parents never swore. And I thought, my God, I grew up on a different planet than this woman. I figured it out, though. I figured it out. My family is gifted. Invariably, at a storytelling concert, there is always half a dozen men who are dragged there to storytelling. Don't really want to be in that audience because they think somebody's going to read a book or they think that it's going to be boring. And those are the biggest fans afterwards because they come up after and go, that was awesome. At the back of the woods, those two acres of woods, was a creek that ran through under the highway, through the woods, and then through my backyard. And that's, and that's where we caught frogs and crayfish and where we fell in just about every day coming home sloshy and where we had real pissing contests. <laughs> Imagine six boys lined up on the bank of the creek seeing who could pee up the bank the farthest on the other side. We called it our park because we, we spent most of our time there. You know, when you tell around a campfire, kids want to hear scary stories. They, uh, they, and they will always tell you it's, when you finish that it's not scary enough. I, I, I think it's a wonderful spot you know, you've got this audience that's there, and it's you're out in the woods, and it's dark, and there's no place to go home to. You can't shut the door. You go back to a tent. So I, I think it's this wonderful thing when you see the looks on their faces, and they want to know what happens next. Some monster or alien or guy coming out of the woods. There's just nothing, nothing better than that. It was a pitch black night. He couldn't see anything. He crawled across that floor. There it was. 
the coffin. He'd carve, he reached up, he opened the lid, and he climbed in, laid back on that cold, dead body. It was clammy, and it, it started to smell. <laughs> it blew out the front door. Mark was running down the street. Mark fell, and the blue ape came right up on him. Uh, 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 he had some really bad breath, too. Uh, and he reached down, the blue ape reached down, and he touched Mark, and he said, Tag, you're it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I think my theory on storytelling is that everyone should have fun. So, you know, regardless of whether you're telling to adults and kids together, kids alone or adults alone, it should be entertaining. I mean, they, they, they came there. Uh, sometimes it's free for them. Sometimes they spend money. But either way, I'm there to, you know, make them happy, make them laugh, or, or you know, pro provide some uh, soul-searching introspection. Bottom line is they need, you know, they should be entertained. A well-told story is a well-told story, um, and will entertain you no matter if it's from, you know, a thousand years ago. It, it will, you know, if it's well-told, you'll want to listen to it.